so that I can send the replay to the people who didn't get to make it. Um, cool. So let us know that you're in the chat. Um, let's get this party started and let us know where you're from, okay? Um, I know Levo is from Florida and Yannon is from Colorado and I am from Colorado. Um, thank you so much for being here. So welcome to Create Your 10K Nail Art Business without adding time to your schedule, even if you aren't an artist. I am super duper excited for you to be here. Christina is from Ohio. Thank you, Christina. Um, and so what I wanted to create here was basically just a really chill vibe, okay? So I wanted to create something where we could basically, you know, iced coffee in hand, um, actually just talk about stuff. Uh, nail pro to nail pro, right? Like in a professional way, that's not super triggering and like um, it's positive, okay? <laughs> so that's great. Um, Carly is from Idaho. Hello, hello from Colorado. All right, so let me see. I'm gonna try and minimize this chat box real quick. Okay, Amina is from Colorado Springs. Cool. All right, so. So yeah, if you're here looking for answers to um, problems or questions that you have, just know that you're not alone, all right? So let's raise each other up in this bad boy. Now, to set yourself up for success, um, basically, I, I just want you to get the most out of this training because, you know, we only have an hour 45 minutes are going to try really, really hard, but it's probably going to be closer to an hour. So if you can, turn off distractions. Um, I'm going to try not to be too distracted by the chat, but I will, um, we'll, we'll talk. We'll, we'll talk in real time, right? And then give yourself a little bit of privacy. And that way, you know, you can actually fully absorb what we're talking about. And give yourself permission to try new perspectives and tactics, okay? So we're gonna go into this with an open mind. And if you hear something that you may have heard before, like, okay, yeah, I already know this, but I want you to ask yourself, am I actually doing this, okay? And of course, the chat is here for all of us to participate and um, learn from each other as well, okay? Cool. And I mentioned this before, but if you stay tuned till the end, I have a really, really special gift for you, okay? like an actual gift, no strings attached, all right? You just have to stay till the end, that's all. <laughs> so maybe that is a string, but that's the only thing. All right, so we're talking about nail art today, nail art business, $10,000 in nail art business in a year, right? So I wanna know if this sounds familiar to you. We have a few different scenarios here. So tell me in the chat if any of these numbers sound familiar. Number one, your clients keep asking for nail art, but you're not yet offering it. Number two, you want to add nail art to your service menu, but you don't know where to start. Number three, you're doing nail art, but you're not charging for it, or you're not charging enough for it. Number four, you'd like to add up to a full services revenue to your income without spending the extra time in your chair. So if any one of these scenarios sounds familiar to you, just let us know what number in the chat, okay? I can tell you right now, um, I love number four. And also number uh, three definitely was something that I didn't really understand when I, when I was uh, like a few, even just a few years ago, okay? Rhiannon says three and four, me too, baby. Totally. Amina says three, Christina says two and three three and four from Carly, awesome. Yeah, well, just want you to know that you are in the right place. I totally feel you, ladies. So the goal of today's training is to help you confidently add nail art to your service menu, amaze your clients, and 10x your nail art revenue, okay? So 10x is just the beginning. Um, whatever, wherever you're starting right now, like that is the first step, okay? And when you implement what you learned today, you will be able to go above and beyond 10x to actual, you know, like $10,000, $20,000 in nail art income, easy, without adding extra time in your chair, okay? I promise. Uh, Lila says number four, yep, 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 totally. Now, what is the, what's the thinking behind these uh, situations, right? So 
what I, what I boiled it down to myself, you tell me if you have any um, other um, observations as well, but there are four fears that leave $10,000 at the nail station for so many nail professionals out there, okay? Fear number one, I'm not an artist. Maybe you can't draw or you can't paint or you, don't, you can't use a paintbrush, you know? Like one of those little detail brushes. Fear number two, I don't know how to do nail art. Maybe you don't feel confident replicating styles that clients bring in um, from their Pinterest boards, right? You're overwhelmed and you don't know where to start. Fear number three, you don't have time. I don't have time. Some nail styles look really, really time intensive. Am I right? Um, and that may be true, but what if you can start like 10Xing your nail art income and like working towards that $10,000 nail art um, like goal without adding extra time in your chair? Fear number four, my client won't pay for extras. Do your clients perhaps guilt you into throwing in nail art at the end of a service? Or maybe they have a sob story every other week and then you feel bad about it? Or um, maybe you just don't offer it because you assume that your clients won't pay or they can't afford it. We can totally go on a major tangent here, but let's wait. <laughs> um, we're gonna address all of these fears like now, okay? So do any of those fears actually resonate with you? Number, uh, number one, I'm not an artist. Number two, I don't know how to do nail art. Number three, I don't have time. Number four, my clients won't pay for extras. If any of those resonate for you, just type the number in the chat. And um, while you do that, Let's go on. Yeah, Rhiannon says one, two, and three. Christina says one and four. Yeah. Amen, sisters. So this look here is three pigments and one chrome pigment. And this is a $15 premium upgrade, but it didn't take any extra time to create. Okay, I didn't have to book extra time in my service for this. Amina says all of them. Yes, you're so right. This set of nails here, I created with three different glitters. Um, there's red and orange and yellow and really, really simple line work. So the lines aren't perfect. They're not straight, um, but that adds to the style. And I sold this set of press on nails for $40 and it only took 30 minutes to create. And my clients are this happy every time they leave my chair, okay? Now, granted, not everyone gets, um, you know, super detailed nail art like this, but they all have that really big smile. Um, and P.S., if you're from the Midwest, well, even if you're not from the Midwest, this lady is, uh, she's a singer named Lynn Solar, S-O-L-A-R, and she is fantastic. Just so you know, <laughs> you should totally check her out. Um, but yeah, she, like her face here, that's pretty much how my clients leave the chair every single time. But it wasn't always like this, okay? <laughs> this is one of the first nail styles that I ever attempted, and I don't even remember what's going on here. It looks like there's some layering and there's some foil, but honestly, like, it's probably a really good thing that this picture is blurry because I don't know what's happening here. <laughs> I was definitely not an artist, and I have been doing nails for three years at this point. Now, if we haven't met before, my name is Mary Chia. Um, I am a nail professional in a salon, well, a salon suite, and also an educator. And back in 2009, I totally forest gumped my way into the CND boot camp training, which is basically their week long training. Um, for their educators. So if you pass the application process, then you have to go to boot camp. And a lot of people actually quit during boot camp too. It was really, really intensive and I had no idea what I was signing up for. Um, but two things happened during this boot camp. 
Number one, I really noticed a different level of professionalism amongst male professionals. Like before that, I was just like, oh, whatever. It's basically just, um, oh, what's that lady's name? Angela Johnson. It was like her, um, you know, her little nail salon skit. That's, that's like my industry, right? And then this happened and I was like, oh no, there is like, you know, rocket levels of um, professionalism in our industry. I get so excited. And then the second thing that happened is that there was a focus on fundamental skills. Okay. Totally rocked my world. And then a couple of years later, I forest gumped my way onto the fashion week team um, for spring summer 2012. So this happened in the fall of 2011. And I don't know how I made it, but whatever, it was awesome. And I got to create looks for the Blondes. Now, the Blondes is a fashion design team, um, a pair, who make these amazing corsets. And you've probably seen them in, um, well, maybe in magazines, but definitely in music videos like Britney Spears, Katy Perry, Beyonce, um, a bunch of other people that I can't think of right now have worn their corsets. and. When I was looking for pictures of this show, um, I was trying to find pictures of the nails that we created, but this was before nail art was like a mainstay culturally, right? And uh, CND had been working backstage at Fashion Week for 15 years, so like 30 seasons at this point. And um, it was really amazing. This is before nail art was a thing, again, and this is before nail companies would pay fashion designers in order to get backstage and do the looks for um, their shows, okay? So anyways, this is where I discovered nail art foil and glitter fades and more glitter fades and more glitter fades. And if you can't tell, um, I was really excited about it. So I brought it home and I sold it to everybody who sat in my chair, right? And the going rate at that time, the industry standard was a dollar a minute or a dollar a nail, whichever is more. Okay. So my potential revenue was $10 per glitter fade or glitter, whatever, and foil. And I was selling it some days I was selling it to everybody. So I had eight services a day. Now that would have added $80 to my daily income. And if you times that by five, and then times that by 50. So basically, you know, if you take two weeks off <laughs> for vacation a year, that could have made me $20,000 extra in that first year. Okay. Now, this was back in the day of pink and white. I still had a lot of pink and white clients. So I was actually probably doing this at, um, to, for about half of my clients at the time. So that at industry standard pricing would have added up to $40 a day which would have been $10,000 for that year. But my actual revenue was zero. <laughs> like, what the heck, right? Like, I was creating so much joy and so much beauty, and I didn't have anything to show for it except some blurry photos that I posted on our salon Facebook. It was, it was kind of a struggle, but do you... Do you feel me on that? Does that um, sound familiar to you at all? <laughs> I really hope I'm not the only one who, um, who, who knows that pain. Rhiannon says, er day, girl. <laughs> I think I said that wrong, but I get you. I know what you mean. Christina is so true. Yes, thank you. Thank you for witnessing me, ladies. <laughs> so in 2013, I moved, well, in 2012, actually, I moved to a salon suite, and people actually started seeing me for nail art. So I was like, yeah, I'll charge new people, um, but I wasn't really comfortable charging full price. So I started at $5 per glitter service or foil service, and I was doing about three of those a day, so that's the average over the whole year, um, which came up to 15 extra dollars a day, and that was $3,000 annually. And that helps like in a lot of ways, right? And then in 2017, I actually bit the bullet. So I, I see a, 
a personal coach. I hire, I hire a life coach, right? And she helps me a lot with my business. And so with her help, I was able to start charging everybody um, for their nail, their nail art. And at this time, so four years later, I added a few more things into my nail art repertoire. So stamping became um, not just popular, but I actually figured out how to do it, right? <laughs> because that takes a little while, right? Wouldn't you agree? So that was at a little bit higher pricing for me. So the average price of my nail art was about $7 over the whole year, okay? And I was doing it about six services per day, which equaled a whole service income or revenue, a whole service revenue in a day. And that added up to $10,050 over that whole year, okay? Now, Keep in mind, I still didn't add any extra time to my services then, but I had finally hit that mark where I was adding an extra service to my day without actually booking an extra service, which was awesome. So last year, my varied pricing um, went up again. So, you know, chromes became uh, popular and I started kind of layering my uh, techniques together. And so the average price for my nail art today is $10 a service. So glitter and foil are still a little bit lower. I still charge $8 for that instead of the industry standard 10. Um, but my average service or my average nail art price is $10 because of those higher end um, techniques. I still do about six services a day and that equals $60 a day. So altogether, last year, I made $15,000 extra in um, nail art without adding any extra time to my book, okay? Which is awesome because, yeah, <laughs> who wants to work more, right? So when I actually finally did the math, I became obsessed with helping nail professionals earn more money in less time with nail art, okay? Especially the nail pros who don't feel like artists because, I definitely am not an artist, and if I can do it, anyone can. You definitely can, and I'm so, so grateful that you're here. So, I want to, rem I want to remind you of something when we go into this. Perfection is not necessary to make a real and lasting difference in other people's lives. And, of course, none other than the magical J.K. Rowling said that, and it's totally true. So what we're going to do today is to blast through those fears that we talked about before and create a framework for salon and nail art success. Now I'm talking about a framework here. So this is something that you can totally personalize. You don't have to like copy me. You don't have to copy uh, Lilo. You don't have to copy anybody else just because you follow them on social media and you think they're amazing. Okay. This is something that you can actually personalize for your own business and your own needs. Now, whatever reason you're here, we are going to reframe a few things, okay, so that we can accomplish our goals. So we're going to think about this as we're going through this training. Truth number one that we're thinking about is nail art can be fun. Truth number two, fun alone does not pay the bills. And I think you understand this already because you're here, right? Truth number three, to increase your revenue, you must treat nail art like the $10,000 business asset it is, all right? This is how you turn nail art into serious money, even if you aren't an artist, okay? And if people try and talk to you about that, oh, you're not an artist, blah, 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 blah. Well, you know what? Uh, they can tell you all that stuff when you're on your all expense paid vacation on a beach somewhere with the money that your nail art brought in as a non-artist. Okay. Can I get a high five? That's for you. Okay. <laughs> all right. So the nail art success framework consists of just four simple pieces. We are going to talk about the number one non-artist hack for foolproof nail art. How to nail your nail art strategy how to create fangirl worthy nail art every time, and the number one mistake nail pros make in nail art. I'm so excited. All of this stuff is what you are going to implement. It's meant for you to implement, okay? So remember, if you think, oh yeah, I already know this, I would like you to please ask yourself, like, well, am I actually doing it, 
okay? So, what you're gonna implement. The number one non-artist hack for foolproof nail art is the first step to creating the perfect nail art style for any client who sits in your chair. So this is a great icebreaker and it helps to kind of like calm the jitters that you get when somebody new sits in your chair or you try something new for uh, the first time. Nailing your nail art strategy is just two simple questions to easily map out your nail art business. And it has to do with the most important person in your business, okay? How to create fangirl worthy nail art every time is the nail art sandwich. And if you know how to make a sandwich, then you know how to make nail art that sells. I'm just gonna go ahead and put that out there right now. And the number one mistake nail pros make in nail art is overlooking the most important part of nail art. And as a result, they lose thousands of dollars a year. And I see this on social media and I see this in real life. So I don't want you to be making this mistake. Okay. And when you implement all of this, you can add an entire services revenue to your day without working anymore. Okay. So, I mean, how much is your average service and how much, how awesome would it be to feel, or how awesome would it be to add the income of five extra services a week without working those five extra hours? It could be 150, 200, $300 extra a week without adding time to your schedule. I'm so excited. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, let's get into it. The first step to creating the perfect nail art style for any client who sits in your chair is skin tone matching. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Was that exciting? <laughs> I feel like I kind of messed that up. So um, what is skin tone? The skin tone um, refers to the undertones of your client's skin. Everybody has a skin tone, okay? Um, this is the best place to start when recommending nail art and nail color because if the colors you choose don't match your client's uh, skin tone, they're going to be less happy with it. Like they might think that it washes them out or it clashes too much. Um, and this is always the best place to start because you want to match your client's skin tone. Now, as you progress and this becomes second nature to you, you might have some clients who don't mind wild and crazy color schemes that don't necessarily like match their skin tones. But if you're just starting out, definitely start here because matching skin tone is always going to result in the nicest, most flattering um, look, okay? And it's really easy to see what can go wrong with skin tone matching when it comes to makeup. So this is the same person, right? But you can see how um, one version looks healthier. There's more glowy. She's more natural looking. And the other is not so much, right? <laughs> And it's the same person. And I think um, her hair probably has something to do with that as well. Like um, the her hair on the left, I think, is a little bit more warm, brassy warm, maybe. I don't do hair, so that's probably not the right word. But you can tell, right? Like one is too warm and one matches beautifully. And her eyes look different even. Now, there are three different skin tones. Skin can be warm, cool, or neutral. And um, please remember that skin tone is not affected by ethnicity. So don't go thinking, you know, like every white person who comes in is going to be cool toned. Every black person who comes in is going to be warm toned. And every like Asian person who comes in is going to be um, neutral. Okay. Because that's not true. Even within families. Okay. So let's start with warm skin tone. Shades and colors like fire enhance the natural beauty of warm skin tones. So what are those colors? Basically, if you look at this um, color wheel, everything on the right, right? So the fire colors like orange and yellow and red, those look the best on um, warm skin tones. Those and those uh, colors with those undertones, okay? So warm skin tones have an undertone of yellow, orange, and red. 
And the veins on the inside, oh, I forgot to talk about that, but the veins on the inside of the wrist here, they will appear green because they have a warm, like warm skin over blue veins, basically. So, you know, warm like yellow and blue make green. Warm skin tones appear to the eye to have like either a gold or a peach or a yellow cast to it. Boop. Okay, cool skin tones on the other hand are flattered by colors and shades like night. So on the left side of the color wheel here, those like blue and purpley colors, um, green, green as well, um, like a cool green. Um, those enhance their natural beauty, okay? Cool skin tones have an undertone of blue or purple, and the veins will appear blue in the wrist. Now to the eye, cool skin tones are going to look pink or red or blue. Neutral skin tones can wear all different colors. Um, this person is actually very lucky, but don't be surprised if a client with a neutral skin tone um, tends towards one side of the color wheel or the other. This probably goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. The undertones of the skin will be either blue and blue, you know, bluey purple and yellow, orange, red, somewhere in between. And the veins of the wrist will also appear somewhere in between green and blue. And the appearance of the skin will go somewhere in between like gold peach yellow and pink blue red. So this is a super crash course in skin tone and uh, yeah, skin tone matching <laughs> and a little bit of color theory. But have you ever had a client say to you that they can't wear yellow or green or purple? Um, let me know in the chat. And this is the reason why, okay? So their skin tone makes them think that they can't wear certain colors. But um, there's always a shade of every color that flatters every skin tone. Rhiannon, Amina, Carly, Lilo all say yes. Right, yeah. Like there's always a blue green or a yellow green, you know, so one for a cool toned person, one for a warm toned person, you know. Now, spoiler alert, um, my gift for you staying until the end will help you with this a lot, okay? So skin tone matching is the best way to make sure that you are flattering any client with or without nail art. Boop. All right, so that's number one. Now let's talk about number two, framework principle number two. Nailing your nail art strategy, two questions to easily map out your nail art business strategy. So for my nail pros who feel like their clients bully them either with pricing or with style of requests, this is where you get to take back the driver's wheel of your business, okay, because you are the boss. Um, these questions will support the most important person in your business, which is you. So question number one, what do you like? What do you like visually? What do you like technically? Um, do what you like and don't do what you don't like, okay? This is super important because it keeps you motivated and it saves time and heartache. And you become the expert instead of constantly wrestling for control back and forth with your clients. Uh, super important, especially if you do have clients who kind of bully you, okay? Now on the client side, this eliminates the paradox of choice, and some people will call it decision fatigue. But this is a real thing. It was a real study. Um, the proof is right there in this book. <laughs> and basically, the paradox of choice says that too many choices actually causes anxiety and fear. Um, even though we think that having the freedom to choose is what's going to make us happier. Okay, so what happens most of the time is when someone is faced with too many choices, 
they actually end up choosing nothing instead, okay? So if you eliminate the nail art choices by focusing on what you like and what you're good at, you also eliminate anxiety for your clients too, okay? So the vibe actually stays relaxing and light and you get to add thoughtful collaboration instead of having power struggles with your clients, okay? So maybe ask them for input with color and mood versus specific techniques that they don't really know about because that's not their job, that's your job, right? So tell me in the chat, what kinds of nail art do you like to wear? And what kinds do you like to create? Some people are really good at wearing um, 3D nail art, and I can't. <laughs> I don't know why. I can't. Um, everything falls apart really badly, even though I really, really, really want it to work. Rhiannon says, I like foil. Me too. I have foil on my nails right now. I don't know if you can see my nails. I don't even know if like I'm on video or whatever, but I have foil on my nails right now. Leela says, glitter foil stamping. Me too. Rhiannon likes glitter. Yes, totally. I love it. Oh, Christina likes everything. Chrome, glitter, stamping, foil, crystals. Rhiannon, oh yeah, I'm stamping. Yes, stamping is awesome. Great, great, great. Okay, so question number two about nail, um, for nailing your nail art business. This one is so super fantastic and it's totally my favorite because I'm just a big giant fangirl. How does your personality show up in your nail art? Because, newsflash, Clients don't just come to you for nails, okay? You as a nail professional are the whole package. You have a personal brand that people love to experience. They stick with you because you're you, basically. And especially as a service provider, it is almost impossible to separate your personality from your art because art is an expression of you, right? Your personality with is going to show up, so you might as well be aware of it now and um, kind of play it up. I think it is a very, very helpful marketing tactic. So here are a couple of examples, okay? So Tori Bastion, um, I, you probably have heard of her. <laughs> she is at The Polished Pinky on Instagram, and she is a really very kind, earthy soul. Um, she's so insanely talented and she features a lot of like beautiful sacred geometry and lots of different colors and, you know, real gemstones that she's actually dug out of the ground with her own hands. <laughs> um, but everything that she uses, like, is just a pure reflection of her. Tori is also a top 10 nails magazine, next top nail artist, um, finalist and she has been a featured artist for CND at Fashion Week quite a few times um, but her art is amazing and it really is just an extension of her personality. Lilo says she's amazing and she loves her. Yeah Tori's awesome. Next example is Elena Folger. She is House of A Nail Design on Instagram. Um, she's awesome. She is funny and she is meticulous and she's reliable and she is like so smart, right? And this definitely shows up in her nail art, which is very precise. Um, everything, her lines, her dots, her balance and her flow are all laser precise. And she is like a girl scout with her nail art. She is always prepared and she's highly communicative and she is the one who will practice a nail art look before her client comes in because they asked for it. And she is always prepared. It's amazing. But her designs are actually very diverse and they are very practical as well. And she runs the gamut from 3D to 2D to hand painted to stamping. Everything is very wearable for her clients, okay? And then, just for balance, I thought I'd throw myself in there. I'm the Abundant Nail Tech on Instagram, and I am slightly irreverent, and I'm always up for an adventure. 
I really enjoy spontaneity and it shows up in my nail art. So I like to use bright colors, especially like primary colors or complementary colors. So colors on the opposite sides of the color wheel. And I really like asymmetrical designs. So random designs that make all of the nails look different from each other, um, even though it's like all the same kind of like theme or style or motif. Those are my favorite ones to create. So can you think of how your personality shows up in your nail art now? I would really love to hear in the chat. And if not, where can you leverage your personality? So like, you know, what do all of your clients say about you? What is their favorite thing about you? And how could you put that in your nail art? Um, or just put, uh, you can just uh, write down in the chat, like what your clients like about you. And then I can help you brainstorm how to put it in your nail art. Um, yeah. Because basically what this is about is just like adding an extra level of personalization um, to your client experience. Okay. So you're just, you're kind of making that connection a little bit closer by giving your client something more of yourself. Okay. Carly says she tries to be picky and detailed and gentle. I like that. Cool. So maybe, you know, um, picky and detailed. I mean, that's definitely going to show up in your nail art. Um, do you like to practice your nail art beforehand? <laughs> Just wondering. <laughs> um, and gentle. Gentle is great for sure that could definitely show up in your nail art um, because you won't have like violent dry brushing lines like, like me. <laughs> cool. Awesome. All right. Next in the framework, how to create fangirl nail art, or, blah, 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 sorry, how to create fangirl worthy nail art every time the nail art sandwich. Oh, Carly says, depends on the design. I've done the golden, oh, the golden gate bridge and did it perfect before my client even got there. That is amazing. Holy moly. Christina says she falls between practical designs and detail. I love it. Awesome. Fantastic. Okay, so let's talk about the nail art sandwich. Um, it sounds like most of you are pretty good at this nail art sandwich, but if you know how to make a sandwich, then you know how to make nail art that sells. So think of making fan, fan blah, 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 sorry, <laughs> think of making fangirl worthy nail art, like making a delicious sandwich. Um, as long as you have your bread and your meat and your cheese and your toppings, you can create a great meal that would make pretty much anyone happy, right? So in nail art, your core nail art techniques are the sandwich ingredients, okay? So not everybody likes the same kind of bread or the same kind of meat or cheese or toppings, right? So you can customize those elements to suit your diner. And the same thing goes for nail art. So for instance, this is a three ingredient nail art sandwich. There are pigments, and there's chrome and there's stamping, okay? And basically, you know, I keep on saying this, but I'm gonna keep saying it. Start with what you like and what you're good at, okay? Make your sandwiches from there. Like in real life, I can make a decent like ham sandwich, but do not come to me for a bun me, okay? Like one of those Vietnamese sandwiches, don't come to me for that. Um, <laughs> That said, here are some of my favorite nail art ingredients or nail art sandwich ingredients. So I love glitter because you can do fades, super um, fancy, and they make your client feel really, really special. Um, you can also do full coverage here too. So this nail here is a full coverage with a fade. Next up, nail art foil, which uh, pretty much everybody also commented that they like. Nail art foil is amazing. You can go single color or you can go multicolored. So you can use more than one color or you can get foil that actually has different colors on it. And there's also foil leafing. So foil leafing is um, 
a different texture and it gives you a little bit of a different look. Another thing that I love are pigments. Pigments can be used to create fades. You could use it full coverage to just change the color or the look of the color that you're using. Um, this is also a great way to neutralize. Like if you accidentally choose a color that's too warm or too cool for your client, you can just put pigments over it to either warm it up or cool it down. And you can also stamp with pigments, which is what I did here with that little jack-o'-lantern. And then there are many more. There's masking, there's carving, there's stamping, there's chrome. But basically what you wanna do is start building momentum with what you have now. And then once you are really good at things, at you know these um, techniques, not just doing them, but like, recommending them and selling them, you know, in a way that keeps your clients really, really excited every single time, then you can start to expand and you'll get more confident and you can start to look at different um, techniques and expanding your nail art ingredients um, when you're making money. Okay, so you don't have to start getting better at anything right now. You just start where you are and you can start making money now and then let that be the momentum that pulls you forward into um, bigger and more expansive profits, okay? You will also get the courage to try new things. So for you and your clients, this actually like upgrades the client experience and the culture, okay? So it's almost like nail art adventures become part of, you know, what your clients look forward to every other week. And then both of you can continue to grow together. So we kind of talked about this already, but your go-to nail art sandwich ingredients, I have a feeling that a lot of them match the ones that you also like to do, right? Yeah. Definitely. Foil, glitter, chrome, stamping. I love it. I didn't put stamping on here. I probably should have put stamping on here. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Um, boop. Okay. This is the last one. We're actually not doing too bad for time. Thank you so much. So the number one mistake that nail pros uh, make in nail art is overlooking the most important part of nail art. And this results in thousands of dollars in lost revenue every year. So um, if you hear people talking about, you know, like worrying about slow seasons and stuff like that, I fear, you know, that this is actually part of it. Um, and I wasn't originally going to include this point, but I think it is really important. So what is it? <laughs> it's focusing only on nail art. And what do I mean by that? The canvas is the most important part of a profitable nail art service, okay? So not giving a damn about the natural nail condition or the enhancement underneath, that is what I'm talking about here. Now, the actual care of the nail plate is the bread and butter of our business, okay? Because Overlooking the canvas does, <sighs> okay, <laughs> I got excited there for a second. So overlooking the canvas, basically we forget that the nail art is actually an upgrade, okay? So if you're doing $100,000 in, in business every year and 20% of it is a nail art upgrade or even $10,000. If you say $10,000 of it is nail art upgrades, well, that's $90,000 that is actually coming from nail care, okay? So if you can't get that canvas beautiful in the first place, you cannot upgrade to nail art, all right? So how does this affect your business? Well, it makes marketing harder. And it's not as, ex as effective, especially if you're using social media. So potential clients are going to keep scrolling. They might stop because they see the beautiful nail art, but they'll keep scrolling if they see you know, dry cuticles or open skin, 
And like I said before, ex well, I probably didn't say this before, <laughs> but um, existing clients are not going to stay if their nail enhancements keep breaking or they keep getting hangnails or, um, you know, their nails break after getting gel, ma gel manicures with you for like eight weeks. Okay. So what do you do? You have to focus on the universals. Focus on healthy nail universals and increase client retention with excellent customer experiences and then the upgrades, okay? So we're actually going back down to the foundation of our business in order to build up a machine that supports nail art upgrades. And then what this does is generates new clients for free. Cool? So, the universals of nail art. Color application. You want thin, even margins, and you want those margins as close to the cuticle as possible. But you want to leave a gap because uh, flooded cuticles are not cute either, right? On natural nails, this looks like healthy cuticles and no damage to the nail plate. Cool? So, here's what to watch out for. Nail damage. So if you look at this picture, I got this picture from my friend Rochelle. Um, I didn't ask her if I could use it, so um, I'll ask her after this. <laughs> Actually, I was just thinking about that. So the bottom part of the nail, that is what the nail looked like when her client came in and started seeing her. And you can see like the white spots and the delamination. And the healthy nail above that was under R Rochelle's care for 10 weeks, okay? So it is not just the nail product that damages the nail. It is the nail professional. Um, it's improper removal. It's heavy-handed nail prep. You know, um, I'd be wary of anything that you have to buff before you apply. You have to buff the nail before you apply because if you buff the, um, the natural nail plate, over and over and over again every two three weeks the nail plate is just going to get thinner and weaker okay and you also don't want open skin so no hanger nails if they're i mean if your clients come in with open skin like a hangnail and a little scab okay that's fine but just cover it up like fix it in a photo editing app before you post it okay now, for nail enhancements, you want proper balance. So you want to make sure that the structural elements of design are there. And that way you have strong nails and you have flexible nails, okay? And the strength and the flexibility are what's going to give you long wear and no breaking. So what do you want to look for? Watch out for, I should say. You want to watch out for bulky product, okay? And you want to watch out for unbalanced enhancements. So what I see a lot, especially on um, social media, is the lower um, the lower arch is actually missing. So um, yeah, I'm like, can I show that to you? I don't know if you can see my mouse, but the lower arch is the bottom of the nail enhancement that comes straight out from the sidewall. And a lot of times when people sculpt on like tips, they will file it out in order to um, achieve the, okay, thank you, Lilo. So they'll file out the, the lower arch to achieve the shape that they're trying to get, okay? And then you also want to check the lines of light. Now, if you're using a gel polish, this can be a little bit tricky because gel polish um, application, depending on how you put it on, it can um, falsely make your enhancements look bulky, okay? So you want to make sure that the lines of light before you apply your color are really, really straight. This isn't just the basis, the foundation of creating a sustainable business that keeps clients, okay? This is also the basis of a very easy and elegant and awesome marketing strategy, especially if you use social media, 
Okay. So what do you focus on on social media? You want to focus again on those universals, those healthy male universals. You also want to highlight your strengths. So if you stick with what you like and what you're good at, just like we were talking about before with those two questions, then you are going to look like a bad ass on your social media. Okay. And what is that going to do for you? It will attract the right clients into your chair. So you don't want people like if what you like, like me, is glitter and foil and, you know, some pigments and messy paintbrush marks, you are not going to attract clients who want um, crystals and big embellishments and, you know, super intricate um, hand-painted designs, right? There are other people out there who can better serve those clients. Cool? So I am just curious... Have you noticed um, those nail care universals when you're scrolling on social media? Like if you check out a hashtag, um, you know, glitter nails or something like that. Have you ever seen those? <laughs> um, because what, do, yeah, Rhiannon says, yeah. So, I mean, what do you think when you see nails where the art looks great, but there's like a giant, like open wound, you know what I mean? Or if you just see bad nails with art on it. And if you haven't seen it, does this bring a new awareness to social media? You're probably going to be seeing it now <laughs> after we've mentioned it. Lilo has seen it too. Yeah, definitely. So I would love to know, why did you show up today? You know, are maybe you're tired of leaving money on the table by not offering nail art as a service. Or maybe you're done feeling paralyzed because you're not an artiste and you don't know where to start. Maybe you're ready to take your client experience to the next level and increase your revenue by $10,000 a year simply by making your clients feel pretty. If you walk away from this training with just one thing, I really, 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 really hope it's this. You already have what it takes to create fangirl-worthy nail art and make money doing it today. You have the personality, you know what you like, and your clients love and trust you today. All you need is a simple framework, the right tools, and an easy way to use them. And I really hope that's what this little training provided. Now, if you want one-on-one -on -one help building a $10,000 nail art business without adding time to your chair, even if you aren't an artist, I have some good news for you. Introducing the Master Painter class. This is a full day of theory and hands-on practice in natural nail care, no damage color systems, and easy, profitable nail art techniques. So, what are the details? This is an in-person class taking place on April 29th from 9 to 5 in Fort Collins, Colorado. You will get all of the supplies provided for you and you get to keep everything. Um, all you have to do is bring manicuring implements and one hand free of product so you can practice. Oh, Karen, thanks. I wish you lived in, well, no, I wish I lived in New Zealand too. <laughs> I still have a great opportunity for you, even though you're in New Zealand. So keep coming, keep, keep stay with us. I'm going to start with what you create in this master painter, um, because what you get is a really, really long list. So you're going to create a fast, easy, pain-free color service that is 100% customized for every client. Um, you will create healthy nails that keep clients coming back again and again. And you will also create the perfect nail canvas for $10,000 nail art upgrades. You will also create fangirl-worthy social media and a zero-cost client referral machine. Now, okay, this list of what you get is kind of long, so bear with me. You will get the CND LED lamp. You will get shellac base coat and top coat and four colors. You will also get all of the products you need to prep, cuticle away and scrub brush. You get home care with solar oil and removal with awfully fast and remover wraps. 
You also get 99% isopropyl alcohol because it's part of the system. And you get files and orange wood sticks. So Kenya files are the best files for uh, natural nail conditions. And basically, this is everything you need to start making money legit right away, okay? You will also get Vinylux Weekly Polish System because this is all about color systems, right? It's not just shellac. You'll get the CMB Shellac Lux System, nail art supply samples, and eight hours of hands-on instruction. And as far as more intangible goodies, you get CMB Master Painter status for five years. You will be a Shellac Certified Pro for three years and you will be listed on cnd.com for free client referrals. Now, all of this together is worth $1,500, okay? Now, you stay till the end, and I promise that I had something special to you, so I have three more things to tell you about. Bonus number one, if you sign up for the Master Painter today, you'll get instant access to a library of nail art sandwich ingredients. The 10K Nail Art Techniques Library is full of simple, easy techniques that don't require booking extra time. So it makes it really easy to just like on the fly upgrade your client service. These are the exact techniques that I use to teach and I teach to nail pros to help them easily grow their nail art revenue. And let me tell you what is included. So you're going to create your toolkit of nail art sandwich ingredients. You'll get instant access to over 20 training videos, and you also get lifetime access to the library. So what that means is as long as this library is available, you will get, um, you'll get access to it. And you will also get all future lessons for free because, um, that's one of the things that I try and do <laughs> um, is I always update it with new easy techniques, okay? So it's not gonna be super fancy, like tons of extra time type stuff. This is gonna be everything that you can fit in an hour with a shellac manicure, okay? Or a rebalance for that matter. This video library is 100% online, so it's very easy to access from your nail station on your phone or from your laptop computer. Now, when I teach these techniques live, it costs $800. And this bonus is only available for free if you sign up for the Master Painter. Now, bonus number two, I really like this one. <laughs> um, if you sign up for the Master Painter today, you'll also get a pocket color wheel. And this tool is really, really helpful with that very first thing that we were talking about. So there's no more guessing. Um, it has definitions and it shows you color relationships and it also includes color harmonies. So you know the pleasing ways to use colors together. It also makes a fun collaborative tool um, to use with your clients. So it gives them a little bit of say without giving them too much control, right? It's like, um, you know, limit their choices. And then you can also talk about like how the colors work together. Okay. And this is also great. Like if a client brings in a nail art style, but wants to change up the colors, you guys can work on it together. And it's a good way to maintain client expectations. Um, so if she chooses the wrong color for herself, um, and it's an upgrade to your client experience, right? So this is an $11 value. And my very last thing this is the stay till the end bonus, okay? Bonus number three. All you have to do here, now you don't have to sign up for the Master Painter for this. Um, I wanna give this to you just for being here now. So enter your email address in the chat and I will send you my skin tone quiz, whether or not you buy the Master Painter today. I'm really, really grateful that you stayed till the end, even though we went a little bit long. And I wanna make sure Thank you, Rhiannon. I want to make sure that, um, you know, you, you get to take action with what you learned today. So um, the first step in making more money with your nail art color services um, is skin tone, right? Cool. We have some questions coming in. Awesome. So what is it? It's a squin, it's a squin, it's a skin tone quiz for clients. This way you can recommend the right color every time and it is an amazing client upgrade. So um, 
you know, you can use this as a conversation and an education tool for your clients. Again, another way to upgrade that client experience and you can include this in your client welcome packet. They will be utterly blown away. Okay. Um, when I teach this live, oh, and you get to become the expert. Now, when I teach this live, it costs $150, okay? So you get it absolutely free just for being here today with me. So thank you so much for that. Now, are you ready to create a $10,000 plus nail art business on perfect nail canvases with free client referrals without adding extra time in your chair? Of course you are, right? <laughs> Yes. So what's the investment? Okay. The total value of all of this stuff here is $2,461. And this doesn't even include like the money that you will make from new clients and your nail art services, right? But you can get it for one payment of $200. Okay. So quickly, um, I'm going to go through this process with you and then we'll open the floor for questions. Oops. Boop. All right, so what you're gonna do is, if this is for you, you're going to go to theabundantnailtech.com slash painter. You're gonna click tickets. And then it's going to pop up this screen. You can change the number of tickets you want here if you want. And then you will hit checkout. Then you're going to enter your buyer info, payment info, billing info, and the name that you want your ticket to be under. Then you're gonna click pay now. And then what happens next? Your digital bonus delivery. So the video um, library and your skin tone quiz will show up within 48 hours. So if you don't get it by then, um, you'll have to check your spam folder, please. And then um, all you have to do is show up in Fort Collins on 429 at 8.50 p.m. AM. Starts at 9. So get there early, right? All you need is your manicuring implements and one hand free of product. Now, as a recap, the total value is $2,461. You get eight hours of hands-on instruction, a complete product kit worth over $700, free client referrals for five years, your bonus of the 10K nail art technique library, the bonus pocket color wheel, and the bonus skin tone client quiz, okay, for just $200. So if you need help, you can email me after this. Um, registration is open for another week, okay? And my email address is mary at theabundantnailtech.com. So if you need help, just email me. Now, the thing about this, uh, you're, the seating is limited. So reserve your spot today. We have 12 spots left and three of them have already been taken. So welcome Rhiannon and welcome Tina and welcome Caitlin. Super excited to have you in this class. It's going to be great. So if this sounds like something that can solve a problem in your business, um, don't wait too long. Whatever you came here thinking, whatever you came here feeling, I'm not an artist. I don't know how to do nail art. I don't have time. And my clients won't pay for extras. Just remember to start where you are. Use what you have and do what you can. Just like Arthur Ashe said. Okay. Thank you so much for being here. I honor you and I honor where you are in your nail art journey. And I hope we get to continue our journey together on April 29th at the Master Paint Fair. Okay. Thank you. Now, I do have some time for um, questions and I just want to make sure that I didn't miss everything here um, or anything here. Questions, questions, questions. Let's see here. Oh, Christina, yes, it would be fantastic for you to be here with traveling with a one-year-old. Oh, I bet I can find some childcare for you, girl. <laughs> I am, it's not exactly local, but like, I know people there. Okay, so actually, okay, first question. Um, I don't live in Colorado. Can I still participate? The answer is yes. Um, this class is actually open to any licensed nail professional, cosmetologist, or beauty student um, in the country. Travel arrangements are not included, although I can give you some great recommendations. Fort Collins is a beautiful place. It's a college town, and everybody in my family went to CSU there, except for me. I went to CU Denver in Denver. 
<laughs> but um, there are lots of really reasonable places to stay out there. And it is just beautiful, family friendly, um, great nightlife, great food. So I, t I highly, highly recommend um, if you do come out, um, make a weekend of it. Okay, it's beautiful. And it's a really easy drive from the airport as well. It's about an hour and a half from DIA. So if you need any recommendations or help with travel arrangements, uh, let me know. There's also uh, Tina who is coming from um, the Western Slope. So the Western half of Colorado, if anybody's coming from that way, I'm sure she'd be open to meeting up as well. I totally just, I didn't just volunteer that. She asked that in the last webinar, just so you know. <laughs> Okay, anything else? Anything else? Nothing in the chat yet. Oh, here's one. Okay, so are the bonuses available after the Master Painter class on April 9th, uh, 29th? So the 10,000 or the 10K Nail Art Library is a standalone video course, so you can purchase that separately. Um, it is almost as much as the Master Painter course itself. Um, that's just the pricing it is right now. But the skin tone quiz is not available separately. Um, but you can buy the color wheel in any art store as well. Now, if you wanted to take advantage of all of this as well, but you couldn't come, um, I can double check on this. I probably shouldn't say this now, but we're friends, so it's fine. Um, I can double check and see if I could just send you the kit. I wouldn't be able to give you Master Painter certification, but if you wanted to take advantage of the product kit, as well as the bonuses here, um, I can check to see if I can make that happen too. And then that way you get everything for the price of 200. Now, let's see here. I've taken the Master Painter class before. Is this class different? Um, so master certifications expire after five years. So if it has been five years, then your master certification is probably expired and shellac certification expires in three years. So typically there are innovations every three years, which is why they expire. Um, so if it's been more than three years, I recommend definitely taking it again, okay? Cool, oh, Christina, yes, the product kit would be fantastic. Um, but if it hasn't been three years and you still want to take advantage of this, totally feel free. Your certification will just be renewed from the date of class, so April 29th, okay? Um, what does the CND.com listing include? Ah, so the only way to get listed on cnd.com is to take a CND class. Um, clients will go to cnd.com and look for salons and nail professionals um, certified who have taken a class basically in CND products. And I always recommend that my clients who move or my clients who are traveling go to the cnd.com salon locator um, to find somebody who, who is skilled right, who is trained. Um, on the nail professional side, it is a great way to get awesome clients who are used to paying premium prices because CND is a high-end line. And um, typically, these clients are well-behaved. They tend to take better care of their nails, and they don't blame you if <laughs> their nail polish chips after a weekend of cleaning with uh, no gloves on, okay? So cnd.com listing is really, really helpful. Uh, mom, mom, mom. And also, you can keep your listing on cnd.com if you move, okay? So if you move salons or if you move, um, well, yeah, if you move salons or if you move your home address and you want your stuff shipped there, then you can change all of that information yourself. It doesn't, the listing itself doesn't belong to the salon. It doesn't belong to anybody except for you, okay? Um, Amina says, I can't make this class. When is the next one? Uh, I don't have another master painter class scheduled for the rest of the year. Um, yeah, I'm sorry about that. You can go onto cnd.com though to see if there's one um, coming up. And Christina, you can do that as well. Maybe they'll have one in Ohio. I know Gina in Ohio had a Grandmaster Weekend recently, but that doesn't help you now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 
<laughs> but um, all of the classes are listed on cnd.com. Alrighty. Um, what can I do if clients want to know what the art is before I start or if they can't decide on what they want? Um, this is a really good question. So again, I would recommend taking back the driver's wheel in your business, okay? Because you are the boss. So reframe their objections. If they want nail art that they didn't specifically ask for, like they didn't book time for it beforehand, um, and you know that it's going to be like crazy or um, like you won't be able to do it and keep your time, then reframe it and be like, oh, you know, I don't have time for that. But how about a surprise manicure, you know, or an artist choice manicure or a mystery manicure? Okay. So, um, reframing it and turning it into something a little bit more enticing um, for your client can help you bring the driver's wheel back into your side of the car, right? And I have to also give credit, the artist's choice and the mystery manicure, those, um, those, those tactics I got from my friend, Rochelle, who I stole that natural oil picture from. <laughs> She's the first one who told me about it. Oh, mm -mm 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 -mm. Christina, happy late birthday to your one-year-old son. So close. You're almost a grandmaster. You have, okay, so if you want to achieve grandmaster status with um, CND, you have two years to do it. So you just have to take all three classes um, within two years of each other. So you have a little bit of time there, okay? Um, what about clients who don't want to pay for nail art? Oh, okay. So this is, again, another tangent, right? So I highly recommend don't make buying decisions for your clients because, um, like, don't think, don't assume anything because people are going to pay for what they think is important. And there's not much you can do to change people's minds, right? Like, some people think paying their car tags isn't important, but they will think that getting their nails rebalanced every two weeks is, okay? So you can't change their minds about that. Um, but there are things that you can do to more effectively market your nail art, okay? So first thing that you could do is to ask at every appointment, just, you know, casually at the end of your color application before you put on your top coat, oh, so do you want some nail art today? Um, especially if someone if you're working with someone who chooses nail art sometimes, okay? So then this can help them, you know, this basically helps to convert them in the chair. And then there are other marketing tactics. So I'm talking about tactics, not a strategy, right? A strategy is basically like a big plan for something while the action items are the tactics, okay? So there are some other marketing tactics that you can try, like wearing nail art yourself. This works really, really well for me. If I'm feeling like I want to sell like a higher end upgrade, I will wear it myself. Um, you can also post photos on your social media, right? That is super popular right now. Or you can print out a photo book um old school style right print out a photo book and put it at your station or do a digital picture frame um my friend elena who who i um showcased back there um in this presentation she does that she's super high tech but she has a digital uh picture frame that shows all of her awesome nail art and then um also weaving in nail art into the uh, the conversation so think of nail art as a solution okay and you are listening for your client to tell you problems that they have so like you know there's a special occasion coming up and it could be something as simple as like a birthday party or a girl's night out for a stay-at-home mom you know like those nights are super important so um you could just be like oh you know do you want something a little bit extra to like uh, to celebrate the occasion, or they can be like, um, oh, what are you wearing? Ooh, you know, it sounds really good with that. Like maybe some silver glitter on this, um, on this certain color, da, 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 da. Okay. So it's super ninja, but just remember that you are offering a solution. Okay. You are making them, you are helping to make them feel pretty and nail art does that 100%, right?
And um, also tell your clients that you attended this workshop, right? They will totally respect that you took an hour out of your Monday, especially in the evening like this, especially with a one-year-old in a, a, a later time zone, Christina. Um, like your clients will totally respect and appreciate that you did that. Um, and it doesn't matter that this was a free class, right? So all of these tactics are about reframing their objections, okay? So that's all it is. You're just putting a positive spin um, and basically blasting down their uh, objections or negativity with nail art, okay? And we could totally go on and on and on about this, but let's do it in real life on April 29th at The Master Painter, okay? What else here? Mm -hmm. Okay, this is a good one. The biggest reason I don't charge for nail art is because I've been doing most of my clients for almost 20 years and they feel like friends. So I throw it in for free. <sighs> okay, let's take a deep breath. Yes, I totally, totally, totally understand that feeling. Um, I basically grew up in the nail salon. Like I was a super duper naive 21 year old when I first started. And I don't even know where I would be in this life without my clients, my generous and my smart clients who taught me so much about the world. And um, I get to share like my dreams and adventures with, right? And I totally get that. But keep in mind that this is your profession, okay? And your profession is different than a friendship. So friends buy each other coffee and they buy each other birthday presents and they send each other Christmas cards, okay? Now, what friends don't do is meet for coffee every other week and order the most expensive like venti iced cloud caramel macchiato um, with extra everything and expect you to pay it to pay for it every time as a treat for seeing them okay now that might be an extreme example but that is effectively what's happening there if you want to be friends with your clients be friends with your clients go meet up out outside of the nail salon um even if it's once a month like legit go to coffee and then buy them the coffee but then you can write it off right as a client gift on your taxes you cannot write off free nail art so not only are you basically giving five dollars or six dollars or ten dollars out of your pocket every single time your client your client friend comes to see you but you're also not getting anything for it from Uncle Sam. I was going to say you're giving it to Uncle Sam, but um, I think it's a little bit worse than that. <laughs> so like friends do those fun things together, but they do not give themselves, give each other actual cash outside, you know, like after tax income out of their pockets just for seeing each other. Okay. So um even if you do want to do something nice for your clients like that, and, you know, maybe you don't have time to go and see them at coffee every month because, you know, everybody's busy, right? Well, then buy a pack of iTunes gift cards or Starbucks gift cards and keep them at your station and give that to your clients, okay? Because at least then that is a tax write-off and the energy is much clearer because, you are treating them as a client when they are in your chair as a client, okay? And they are treating you as a professional and paying for your professional services when they are in your chair. Cool? Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. Um, the energy of it is completely different and you're, you know, shooting yourself in the foot is a terrible term but that's the first thing that came to my head. You're shooting yourself in the foot twice when you just throw in nail art for free, okay? So, all right, we're out of time. Thank you so much for, for hanging out. Oh, it was an almost an hour and a half. I'm so sorry for this took so long, but I had a great time and I hope this is really valuable for you. If you wanna talk about anything else that we talked about today, if you have more questions about, um, about the business part of nail art, if you want, if you have more questions about the master painter, 
definitely email me, mary at theabundantmailtech.com. Thank you, Christina. Thank you, Rhiannon. Thank you, everyone who is still here. And I really, really hope I get to see you on April 29th. Okay? Have a great time, and I will see you so soon.